them. For more on the monkeypox outbreak and the response here in the Bay Area, we're joined now by Dr. Peter Chin Hong, infectious disease specialist at UCSF. Doctor, always great to see you and, and get your perspective here. Uh, a lot of frustration and a lot of anger, especially in the LGBTQ community in San Francisco, about the, the slow rollout of the vaccine and the poor response to this outbreak so far. Why do you believe we're in this position where in San Francisco cases are climbing and the city is not even close to meeting the demand for vaccine doses? Well, Alex, I think it's a complex uh, confluence of factors. The first is that there's only one factory in the world that makes it, and it's in Denmark. And uh, they have put in their order, but we didn't have enough in stockpiles. Um, the other aspect is that um, until recently, first doses weren't prioritized. So people were, you know, uh, in line for their second doses. So that was, meant that only half the amount of folks could be um, vaccinated. And I think, frankly, it took everyone by surprise. Uh, mm. No one expected the signs and symptoms to be so subtle and uh, that regular contact tracing won't work. At the end of the day, you require funding, and uh, this is not COVID funding, so that's to come out of another po of pocket of money. You, you touched on this. The, the monkeypox vaccine is obviously a, it's a two dose series. But in San Francisco, because of the lack of doses, they're prioritizing those first doses for people. Do, do you you agree with this overall strategy? It's, it's kind of like what we saw early on during the covid outbreak here. And, and does just one dose of the monkeypox vaccine offer enough protection to kind of slow the spread in the community? Yes, definitely. Um, we have some laboratory data um, saying that you can actually have two years, up to two years of protection just from one dose alone. It's not like the COVID vaccine where you need two to count as the prime um, dose. So uh, it's a little bit different. The second dose in monkeypox is to have you go on for years. Of course, we prefer to have everything in order, but the UK and New York, uh, everyone started uh, prioritizing first doses. And that's what the city started doing as of Friday. All right. So this uh, declaration here from the World Health Organization uh, came down over the weekend. Uh, they have declared monkeypox a global health emergency. That's the highest level of alert that the agency has. Uh, how do you think this is going to improve the public health response to the outbreak here on the ground level in the Bay Area? Is, is this going to lead to, to more vaccine doses arriving here in short order, you think? No, not immediately. Um, I think it will have more implications globally first. Mm. The U.S. still has to declare it a public health emergency to devote uh, specific funding to it and to make it easier for diagnostics, testing and treatment. But for right now, uh, it's really because many countries are very, very under-resourced and it will allow uh, tracking across borders. So uh, again, much of this is low, unfortunately, and I wish it could be faster because it's a very uh, important time right now if we don't want it to become part of our daily life and become endemic. Let me ask you here uh, so far, uh, obviously, you know, what we're seeing in San Francisco play out is that the population most affected by the monkeypox outbreak is men who have sex with men with, with multiple partners. What, what is your expectation about the, the likelihood this virus it will, will soon spread beyond that group into the broader population? I think for now it's low likelihood, but uh, if this continues um, and nobody knows exactly when, um, but it could theoretically start affecting uh, more household members uh, in those households where people have had infection, like the two kids on Friday. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, very, very low likelihood at this moment. But again, things are changing uh, quickly. And in the meantime, the most important steps that you think people should be taking to reduce the chance of becoming infected? Well, um, I think it for temporarily, uh, temporarily people can take measures of limiting uh, sexual partners, uh, maybe using condoms, etc. But again, I, I think you have to meet people where they are. And above all, there are some civil linings. If people get exposed, uh, you can still use one dose of the vaccine to prevent the occurrence of disease. Uh, if people uh, get really, really sick, uh, we have uh, therapeutics, primary, you know, available in Bay Area and. Uh, above all, uh, no one has died in the United States right. from this. So it's a little bit different. Yeah, important to point that out and, and put it all in perspective. We appreciate your time and insight. As always, Dr. Peter Chin Hong from UCSF. Good to see you. Thank you. Thanks so much, Alex.